Hey, Jeremy Cook here, and today I'll be showing off how I made these holders for my Allen sets using a 2D scanner to get the pattern for it, and then 3D printed it. It's a pretty cool process, so be sure to follow along to see how I did it. That's right, it was a pretty neat process going through this. Basically, I just scanned the bottom of these Allen keys, key holders, in with a 2D scanner, and then 3D printed them. That's the problem I was trying to correct there, because sometimes I'd set it up on there and it'd just fall over. I didn't even set that up, it just fell over accidentally. So these new holders, they're not going to fall out of there without me wanting them to get taken out. So there's the first step in the process, actually scanning it with a flatbed scanner. This is my brother printer scanner, it's been quite the quite a good machine actually. The post-it notes on the left act to kind of align everything on one axis so I can more easily trace it. So once I scanned it in, imported it as a canvas into Fusion 360, and then I just manually trace it with, uh, with these line tools. There might be a better way to do this, and if there is, definitely let me know in the comments. You'd have to assume there'd be tweaking to tell the computer what's yellow and what's black here, or, or white. Either way, I was able to trace it out, and it actually came out pretty well. The only thing was the scale was a little bit off, so I had to take a dimension on this to see how high it was on the computer, and then measure, measure the actual Allen pack in real life. So. Allen pack dimension divided by what's on the computer, and that gives you a scaling factor. So I scaled everything up by about, about a factor of 12. And that dimension came out just about right. After that, it was time to offset the outside so I could actually make it a, a solid body rather than a, a line. So took that line out, then extruded it, and I've got a ring that in theory will fit around the Allen pack. After that, it was time to do another offset and extrude that so it's not just going to drop out of the bottom. And then on the front, I decided to just cut out a, a bit of a cavity there, or a, a gap, I guess, so that I wouldn't necessarily have to lift the whole thing all the way out. I could just lift it up a little bit and then pull it out the front. That makes things a lot easier with screwdrivers and the like, and I've found that to be a pretty, pretty good technique. Now in the back, of course, I had to model up the, the hooks. At first I thought I'd put these in the downward direction, which isn't really the right way to do it. You want to put it on the top. You can see I modeled this in kind of a weird way there. I extruded everything out from the back and then cut it, which meant that when I tried to get it to the top, I had to do a couple of a couple of kind of janky cuts on it. I learned from my mistakes when I did the metric set, which isn't analogous whatsoever to anything in, in real life, of course, but there I'm just making the cuts and then, yeah, looks pretty good. Put a couple of radii on there and yeah, that would that would make a pretty good holder. So a couple of the prints I made, a little bit low quality there. I, that'll be improving soon, trust me. So there it is, it goes on, slides in, and that should not fall off without me wanting it to. Then I could take it out and if arranged in just the right way, I don't have to pull it up all the way to get it out looking pretty good. So after that yellow American set, it was time for the metric set. Scanned that in, imported the canvas, and this time instead of tracing it first and then scaling it, I actually scaled it and then traced it. Use the same scale factor as before, about 12.4, somewhere around there. I then traced part of the outside so I didn't have to cut it up, did an offset and then connected everything so I could extrude it. And then, of course, I did a, a bit of an offset on the back, too, so I did form a lip on the bottom. I thought this was looking pretty good, but if you notice, I'm, I'm make, actually making a pretty big mistake here. I'm extruding through the bottom. You can see it level with the post-it, so it's actually coming out of the bottom of the scanner rather than through the top as it realistically should be. You might think this would work, but in actuality, I'm producing a mirrored image of what it should be. Well, this will work in some cases. In this case, it was a, a big mistake and just made, meant, meant a part that wasn't usable whatsoever. So maybe you've made this part mistake before and if not, then good for you. Just make sure to not do that. Make sure to model everything as realistically as possible and that should save you some headache. So basically everything I did here, I had to do it the other way to, to make sure it was realistically made. So just remember that. You're kind of, made, kind, of, kind of showing you the bad example here. Now, one thing I did do pretty well on this, I think, is that I made some construction planes so that I could I could model the whole thing in this in this plane and then just extrude it throughout the you know through a symmetrical dimension. 
And once that's done, I can copy it to the other plane and do the same thing. Sh should be a little bit easier to modify if I need to. So I extruded that symmetrically, just made it so that it could fit in those peg pegboard holes and put some radii and stuff on it too, so it would slide in nicely. And you can see it there printing out that's the, both the good version and the bad version. I'll show you what's going on here. First, let's t check out the, I guess the not not terrible, but not great version of the, of the US set. You can see it, it slides in nicely, but it does have the hooks downward. So that wasn't what I use. Now this is the biggest mistake is this symmetric set slides in, but it's, it's mirrored. It's a mirror image. So it's just not going to go in there correctly. Made another version of this, but this was just, just a little tighter than I wanted. So I, I made it again. I think there may have been some other problem with it, but this, this probably would have worked, but I think I needed to test out my printer to be honest. Still looks, looks pretty good. Would hold it nicely and as the final version did as well. So yeah, those things didn't hold on very well once we were, they were up there. But once I got everything off, put that on, and now I'll be able to get my hex keys, Allen keys, whatever you, whatever you want to call them, put them on and off as I at will without having to worry about it being in a parts bin below. So looks looks pretty good. If you know, if you did enjoy the video, I mean, if you have this exact same set, I'll go ahead and put those up somewhere so you can download them. If not, I hope, uh, you know, hopefully you've taken taken from this that you could scan something on the bottom, trace it, and then make something three-dimensional with it, with your printer. Also, you know, obviously you want to make sure that you don't make a mirror image of what you're, what you're trying to do. That'd be bad as well. So if you did get something from this video, if you liked it, Subscribe, give it a thumbs up. What you know, all the things that you're supposed to say at the end of every YouTube video. Go ahead and do that if you want. So either way, thanks for watching. Oh, and one more thing. I, I didn't make this, but I thought it was really cool. It's a um it's like a meant to be a holder for like brooms and stuff, but it had a open scad model that you could modify and I made mine so that it could hold these dry erase markers. Also put some magnets on the bottom and later I even put some some plastic dip on it so that it wouldn't slide around so much hinges are just made from from paper clips i'll put some info on that in the description put some stuff on twitter about it so yeah i'll put a link to that so yeah so uh so yeah just uh again that's not my design but i thought it was thought it was pretty cool anyway so thanks so much for watching i'll see you next time this is jeremy s cook signing off